Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to today's live lesson. Um, I hope, oh, hold on, I can hear myself. Let me just turn the volume down on my phone. Um, so welcome, it's Wednesday, so that means that it is question and answer day. Um, now, if you were with me last week, you will remember that we had, well, I had <laughs> some technical issues with getting the slides and all the um, graphics to you. But this week I have been really on the ball and I have been working very hard to make sure that everything is working. Um, so you will be able to see hopefully in a minute or two that we have everything working fine. I even figured out how to do a split screen. So when we come to pronunciation, you will be able to see my face and be able to see me pronounce the words, but you will also still be able to see the words on the screen. <laughs> how cool is that? So come in, join the live lesson. If you have any questions that you would like to ask about what I am teaching today, then please feel free to comment underneath uh, the video. I have my, my phone beside me so I can see the comments as they come in live. I will be able to see if you are sharing or if you are giving me likes or hearts or anything like that as well. So come in, say hello, tell me your name and tell me where you're from first of all, so that I know that people are watching. So hopefully you can hear me and hopefully you can see me. Uh, if you are watching the replay, uh, either here on Facebook or over on my YouTube channel, welcome to you. And if you have questions for any future question and answer sessions, then please feel free to add questions in the comments below. If this is your first time watching me, then welcome. My name is Louise and I am an English teacher. I specialise in teaching speaking and also writing. Uh, that can be for any situation, writing and speaking for exams, writing and speaking for work, for your business or for you, a promotion or a job that you do or just for your general pleasure for speaking with your friends, writing to your friends. So that's the things that I specialise in, taking you to a more confident you in, with your abilities in English for speaking and with writing as well. If this is your first time and you would like to join further lessons with me in the future, then right above my head, just about here, there will be a little rectangular box with my picture in it saying live notifications. If you click on that, then the button will turn blue with a tick. And that means that anytime I go live here on Facebook, then you will get a little notification in your in your face, the top of your Facebook page that will tell you I'm live and you can immediately jump into the live lesson with me. At the moment, I'm only doing this one live lesson a week. I do hope to get that up to maybe two or three different lessons during the week. Um, but as you can see, if you're following me on the pay, on the business page, the Lexiconology eCafe, I have one or two things happening that we will talk about a little bit later on during this lesson. So, um, who's here? Uh, jump in, tell me who you are, tell me where you're from. Um, and let's let's get a conversation started as well. So if you're watching, come in, join the live lesson. Feel free to share this with your friends or anybody else you think would find this useful and we will have a good conversation. Lots of questions, hopefully, and answers. So today, if I seamlessly move, hold on, bear with me a second because that's not, there we go. Okay, because I was pra practicing, I didn't I didn't make sure that um, I was back on the front slide. Bad me. Okay, so today we are looking at a continuation of our lesson from last week, which is pronunciation of vowel sounds. So last week we looked at the monophthongs. This week we are looking at the diphthongs, which is 
double sounding vowels. So where we have two vowel sounds together in a word. And I have lots of examples for you. And I will be sending out a vocabulary sheet with the vowel sounds and examples of these words after the live lesson today. We also have a question um, that came in this week. Um, someone has been reading a book. We will look at that in a little bit, a little bit later on. Um, and they came across uh, a little phrase that they just didn't understand. So asked me, what does it mean? So we will be looking at what does thrice welcome mean? And as always, I will be answering any of any of your questions that you have for me live uh, during this session. So let's get started. Continuing on our question from last week from Hema, who is in Spain, um, and Hema asked us if we could go over the pronunciation of vowel sounds. So as I said earlier, we did the monophthongs last week and, um, oh, hi Anna, I'm very well, thank you. How are you today? Um, so we looked at the monophthongs. So here in the top left corner here, we were looking at the monophthongs last week and we went through these in quite a lot of detail. And so this week we are going to be looking at the right hand section of this table. We are going to be looking at diphthongs. OK, so that is where we have two vowel sounds together. So let me move down. And it's very much the same as last week in that the sounds that we make are um, dependent on how we position our mouth, how we position our jaw and our tongue. So really we have the same techniques that we were looking at last week. So parts of the table will be our tongue is to the front of our mouth, either hitting through, hitting the back of our teeth or coming through our teeth uh, or uh, our tongue is towards the back of our mouth. So we are allowing more air to move through our mouths as we make the sound. And we also have a closed mouth position, slightly open and an open mouth. And these these positions of the mouth reflect to the first vowel sound that you make with these diphthongs. So what you will notice with all of these diphthongs is we have covered both vowel sounds already when we looked at the monophthongs. So we have here, funnily enough, the word here, we have two sounds together. So we have the i sound, he, he here. So we have an i sound, but we also have the schwa. And if you remember from last week, it's the most common sound that we have in the English language. And it's that sort of uh, uh sound. So we have here, here. So we're moving quickly from one vowel sound to the next vowel sound. Here, here. And here we have um, an e eh sound followed by the i eh sound to make eight, 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 eight. So it's a very subtle second sound. So the the stress we put is on that first sound, but we just have a slight hint of a second vowel sound coming through as we are making these words. Um, and then we have cure, cure. So here we can think about that we are making cure, cure, cure. So we have to have that slight uh sound to get us from that u to the r sound. And again, it's another schwa that we're making. So cure, cure, cure. Then we have boy, boy. So we're making an aw, eh, oi, oi, boy. And finally, no, no. So we've got a 
a beginning of an uh and then an up and no. And our final row we have um, there. So again here we see again another schwa sound. Um, so this is where it starts to come in, where we start to see schwa appears all over the place. So there. So e er, e a, e a, e a, e a, er, there. My, my. So again, we've got that letter Y, as we did with boy, but it's not a Y sound um, that we are making. We're making an I, my, my. So my, my. So we've got an A and an I together, my, my. And finally, we have now, now. So we're going from an ow, ow. So now. So those are the diphthongs. Not as many as the monophthongs, but you can see that there are more possibilities for lots of words and lots of sounds that we are making with the diphthongs. And you will see that, uh, let me move over here. I have, wasn't that slick? I'm so pleased with myself at how, how I figured how, out how to do all these lovely things. So as I say, this is a handout um, and I've taken it actually from um, a, a Russian, a Russian English language site of all places. Um, here is the link here um, if you want to look up this website. It's actually very use, a really useful website. Um, lots of explanation in Russian. So if you are Russian, then it will be fabulous for you. Um, but there's lots of English explanation as well. And this was a really good comprehensive table of the sounds that we make and similar words that have a similar spelling uh, with all the sounds that go with it. So if you want to have a look at the website page, then it is usefulenglish.ru phonetics slash practice diphthongs. Uh, so that's where I've taken this from today. So we have about five or six different pages, all with this, with the different sounds that we have just looked at. So the first sound that we have, and if you look, this is a full page, all of the sound that makes A, A, as in ray, ray. So we have all these similar, very small words that sound like this. Rate, late, Kate, fate, race, base, play, same, name, take, ache, lake, rage, age, wage, save, cave, wave. Okay, I did that quite fast so you can see how it, as I'm speaking naturally, how my mouth moves when I'm saying these words. I'll say them more slowly for you as well so that you can watch the video back and you can stop after each word, practice saying these words. Watch how I'm moving my mouth. Can you copy how I'm moving my mouth? Okay, here we go. Rate, late, Kate, fate, race, base, place, same, name, take, ache, lake, rage, age, wage, save, cave, wave. Okay, so that's the first line in the A sounds. Then we move on to some more complicated words. Still the same sound though. Dictate, educate, decorate, celebrate, concentrate, investigate. Dictate, educate, decorate, celebrate, concentrate, investigate. Cable, table, able, cradle, range, change, strange, taste, waste. 
baby, bacon, paper, April, danger, angel, stranger, basis, lazy, crazy, patient, racial, nation, nature, fatal, patriot, radio, vacant. Okay, there are more. There's another page of these. Uh, okay, let me scroll up to the last line. Ray, gray, play, lay, day, may, say, way, pray, stay, stray, delay. Okay, up to the next page. Okay, here we have, here we have sounds. So if you notice all of these A sounds on the first page are all with the letter A. So we're making that A sound with words that have an A in it. So we can associate, okay, we're using a, a, an A sound. But here on the second page, we have some examples of words that still have that same sound, but no longer have a letter A in them, but we still make the word in the same way. We still make the sound in the same way. So we have hey, pray, they, convey, obey. Okay, so the sound is still the same. Although when we look at the word, if we're reading it, then the letter isn't the same, but you have to remember that the sound will be made the same. Uh, then we have rain, main, aim, brain, drain, train, stain, remain, explain, complain. Fail, mail, sail, rail, raise, raid, afraid, wait, straight, faint paint. And here another example of um, a collection of words where we don't have the letter A in it. Wait, way, eight, vain, neighbour. And finally we have, oh not finally, <laughs> I've seen more in the corner of my eye. Okay, break, great, stake, betrayal, portrayal, layer, player, conveyor, surveyor, saying, staying, playing, laying, praying, delaying, conveying, obeying, archaic. Okay, you will be pleased to know that that is all for the A sound. Okay, I say okay a lot, don't I? <laughs> So that's just a reminder. Okay, that's the first of the diphthong sounds for you. A. So here we have the next sound. So we have eyed, eyed. So eyed, eyed. With ride, nice, ice, life, file, smile, line, fine, quite. Rise, wise, prize, high. Okay, so it's quite a subtle sound, this one. I, I. So it's there's a little hint of an ah sound in there. Uh, okay, polite, combine, arrive, surprise, despise, organize, modernize. Private, library, final, minus, crisis, climate, bicycle, horizon, item, Ida. Now, interesting there. We'll just I'll just highlight this word because we have two letter I's, but they're both pronounced differently. Crisis. So the first I is the one where we are pronouncing the I sound. The second I is a single monophthong, I, crisis, crisis, I. 
So that has two vowel sounds. So a lot of these words have two vowel sounds. So you have to be aware of that as you are reading or as you are looking at new words. That's where a, a good English dictionary, either an online one or an old fashioned book, uh, is really useful because in an English dictionary, a full English dictionary, not one that translates into your own language, will give you the phonemic spelling of the word. Now, that gives you how to pronounce it. It doesn't give you the, uh, the, the spelling of the word or different spellings. It's the, the sounds that you make to say the word correctly. So if you look up crisis in a dictionary, if you're unsure how to pronounce it, you will get the get it written in phonemic lettering to tell you how to pronounce that word. Okay, let's move on. Idea, ideal, identity, identical, biology. Find, kind, mind, blind, child, mild, wild, climb, rifle, trifle, title, idle. High, sigh, sign, right, fight, night, light, sight, height. Lie, die, tie, die, rye, buy, I, buy, guy, alibi. Okay, so we have here lots of different examples of very similar words sound that sound the same. So we have there by and by, both different spellings, different meaning of the word, but they both sound the same. Okay, and we call those, that's a question for you, what do we call words that sound the same, but are spelt differently and mean something different. So can, if you can answer that question in the comments, I am looking for comments uh, if you are watching. So tell me what is the name that we give to words that sound the same, but have a different meaning and are spelt differently. Okay, moving on to the next sound. No, nope, we're still on the same sound as in ride. So here we go. So these are the these are the most common sounds that we have as well. The double diphthongs, the other uh, the other remaining sounds are slightly smaller than these. So carrying on with I as in ride, cry, dry, fry, try, buy, my, sky, style, type, hype, nylon, cycle. Cyber, hybrid, dynamite, dynamic, hyperactive. Rely, reply, apply, deny, satisfy, modify, signify, analyze, paralyze. So in that group of words, we can see that it's actually the end sound, the Y sound, that actually takes on that I. So rely, reply, apply. So it's not always the first vowel that you come to. So sometimes it's different letters in the word that are making up these different sounds. Buying, lying, flying, frying, trying, drying, crying, dying, denying replying. Diet, client, quiet, riot, giant, lion, violet, dial, diary, diagram, denial, trial, science, society, pioneer. Buyer, flyer, dryer, higher, iron, liar, prior. Fire, higher, dire, wire, tire, tired, entire, aspire, expire, desire, require, acquire, empire. Okay, so next. Uh, if 
at any point um, any of these words that we are going through, if you're unsure what any of these words mean, then please let me know as well in the comments below. Um, I do like comments. This is question and answer Wednesday. So if you do have a question about any of these these words that I am using, the sounds that I'm making, how would we use a particular word? Let me know. Okay, next sound is the ow sound as in how. So how, cow, now, allow, owl, brown, down, town, clown, drown, crown, crowd, powder, browse, browser. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, a bit of a, a dry throat. Loud, proud, cloud, out, shout, about, doubt, foul, noun, house, mouse, mouth, south, couch, found, ground, around, pound, sound, count, amount, mountain, announce, bounce. Allowing, plowing. Okay, so you notice there are two different spellings there of the word plowing. The word with the W is American English spelling and with the O-U-G-H, that's the British English spelling. We love putting extra letters in there when they're not really necessary. Okay, so plowing, they are both pronounced exactly the same, whether you spell it just with the W or with the U-G-H, plowing. Towel, bowel, powell. Power, tower, flower, shower, coward, howard. Hour, hour, sour, flower. Next sound, oi, oi, <laughs> which is actually something you've, if somebody's annoying, you go, oi, shush. That's what I would say, oi as in boy. So here we have noise, voice, avoid, poison, join, coin, point, boil, boil even, foil, oil, spoil, toil, exploit, joy, toy, boy, annoy, employ, destroy, Toying, employing, destroying, annoying. Loyal, royal, voyage, annoyance, oyster, destroyer, employer. So that was a nice small, a little small example there. So not too many with that sound. Then we have the O sound as a no. Roll, bone, phone. Stone, close, note, notice, lonely, home, nope, Ho open, ocean, remote, suppose, go, ago, no, so, toe, hero, zero, veto, ego, echo, radio, studio, Mexico, potato, tomato, Logo, moto, solar, polar, modal, total, motor, moment, bonus, focus, vogue, social, soldier, co-worker. Cold, gold, hold, old, bold, sold, told, roll, Pole, control, bolt, colt, folk, yoke, comb, don't, won't. Most, post, host, hostess, ghost, both. Road, load, boat, coat, oat, oak, soak, goal, coal. Coach, 
approach, roast, toast, boast, coast. Soul, shoulder, though, although, dough. Some more. Okay, obey, omit, hotel, motel. Low, no, mo, snow, show, toe, o, own, bowl, blow, blown, grow, grown, growth, throw, thrown. Follow, borrow, narrow, sparrow, window, yellow. Knowing, going, growing. Throwing, showing, sewing, towing, blowing, owing, flowing. Following, borrowing, narrowing, zeroing, echoing. Heroic, stoic, poet, poetry. Lower, slower, more, borrower. Follower, widower. And that is all the sounds. <laughs> uh, okay, so that was all the sounds for making diphthongs. And as I say, I will add the a link to the PDF of all those words so you can print them off and practice saying those words. Some of them will be new to you, some of them you will be aware of already. Um, so just practice them, say them slowly, say them quickly, add them into sentences, make sentences out of these words and see how you get on with making these words. So if we move back to where we were. So there we go, that was our diphthong. And we are now moving on to our next question, which came in from uh, one of my students called Mate, and he is in Hungary. So I hope you're watching Mate. I, I don't know if you are here or not, but hopefully if you're not here live with me, then you will be watching this on replay. Uh, and he asked me yesterday uh, if I could answer this question. What is the meaning of thrice welcome? So I had to do a little bit more digging with, can you give me a little bit more context to where you have heard this or seen this? And it turns out that this was in a book that he has been reading. And the book is a uh, very famous book. It has been made into uh, three films um, and it is The Hobbit. And I have found, I think it, this this um, expression thrice welcome is mentioned more than once in this book, uh, but I have found one example of of this this saying, this expression from the book and I will read it out to you just now. So this is from, I believe, chapter 16. It's been a long time since I read The Hobbit, so I would, I would have to find my book and try and find um, examples of this. So here we have um, this extract from chapter 16 of The Hobbit. The elven king looked at Bilbo with a new wonder. Bilbo Baggins, he said. You are more worthy to wear the armour of elf princes than many that have looked more comely in it. But I wonder if Thorin Oakenshield will see it so. I have more knowledge of dwarves in general than you have, perhaps. I advise you to remain with us, and here you shall be honoured and thrice welcome. Thank you very much, I'm sure, said Bilbo with a bow. I don't think I ought to leave my friends like this. After all, we have gone through, after all we have gone through together. And I promise to wake old Bomber at night. And I promise to wake old Bomber at midnight too. Really, I must be going and quickly. So here we have this example of thrice welcome, 
we have the elven king who has been given some information in fact he's been given um if you if you're aware of the story he has been given the arkenstone by Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins which is um the object that he um he was recruited to find by Thorin Oakenshield who is um the leader of um the dwarves uh, and he um has been searching for this particular gemstone uh, but on their journey we learn lots of different things and Bilbo has decided that perhaps giving the Arkenstone to to Thorin is not the best idea so instead he goes to the elf camp um, because there's a big there's a big fight brewing there are lots of armies i believe that in the 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 films this was um the the hobbit the battle of the five armies i think was the film that this this particular um extract would be from if you are familiar with the film rather than the book um but here what uh, thrice welcome means is it means thrice is a very old word meaning three so th you are three times welcome and I think that it is just a way of saying that you are very welcome to to be with us uh, we you are welcome you are welcome thrice time welcome I think I've seen that in other hobbit books in Lord of the Rings as well that it seems to be perhaps a hobbit greeting of making sure that everybody feels very welcome so here instead of saying welcome three times he's saying thrice welcome and thrice as i say is a very old english word meaning three so it's not something that we would hear an awful lot of in modern english nowadays but perhaps if you are reading classic literature you might see thrice uh, so thrice I rang the bell before someone answered so three times I rang the bell is the way we would put it now but in old-fashioned English we would have this word thrice so I hope that that answers your question you can let me know in our next lesson um, if you have any other um, words that you have found in, um, in in any books that you are reading by all means ask me ask me any questions that you like about anything that you are reading or anything that you have heard um okay so now it is over to you uh let me let me come away from that screen it's now time for you to ask me any questions that you may have um about learning english um so have you been following the olympics has there been something in the olympics that you would like to be able to talk about in english but you're not sure about um, a particular sport for example or something a little bit more controversial um, about have there been athletes that have been banned because they have been taking drugs and you would like to talk about that so any questions about anything that you have read or seen or that you have been studying this week and you would like a little bit more clarification on now is your opportunity to ask me these questions so i'm just going to jump into into my facebook because i do have uh, i do have my my phone up with comments on um but let me see if anybody has made comments because i do actually share this out across a variety of my Facebook pages so sometimes people comment on one of the other pages and I don't always see them so I would just like to double check and see if anybody has any other questions before I talk about something else just finally um, no I can't see that anybody's asking any questions at the moment um, now very interestingly I, I am in the lexiconology cafe group page if you are not already a member if you go to the top of this video link there is a link that will take you directly there you are most welcome to join so please please click the link and I will be adding I will add people in as you are coming in to the group 
It's uh, lots of fun in the group, lots of sharing of useful information, not just from me. It's not just about me sharing lots of different things. Lots of other people within the group uh, share useful information that they are finding from their own personal studies. So for example, um, I can see in the group today that um, Anna has posted something to do with phrasal verbs for traveling. And that is very interesting because I'm actually going to be doing some lessons on phrasal verbs. Um, so um, phrasal verbs are something that everybody is always confused about. Everybody doesn't, don't really know when to use them or how to use them. So I will be looking at phrasal verbs in a lot more depth in future lessons. So that was interesting that I've just seen some phrasal verbs there that have been posted earlier on today. In fact, yesterday, I think, or was it today? Today. Um, okay, let me just quick. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, you're very welcome. So I've just seen the message from Mate. Okay, you're very welcome. If you have any other questions, then um, you uh, feel free to ask them and I will answer. So yes, that is um, one of the, the future plans that are coming. There are phrasal verbs coming your way soon. I will also be looking at an A to Z of irregular verbs. And that will be a series of pre-recorded uh, videos, short videos with the A to Z of irregular verbs. So looking at how each verb is formed, what part makes it irregular, and some examples of how we would use that in, in everyday speaking. So there are roughly 160 irregular verbs. So that's going to be quite a big video series coming your way very soon. Also at the top of the video, there is a there are a couple of links to be able to book yourself on to group lessons. So the first group lesson is starting from Monday, the 15th of August at 2.30 British summer time. I will put a link, uh, I just remembered, I will put a link to the top, in the top of uh, the comments to convert that time into your own local time. So 2.30 th p.m. is British summer time here in the UK and we will be each week in the reading in the reading class we will be looking at a classic English novel and we will be reading through it, we will be looking at some of the vocabulary, we will be working on some pronunciation, we will be doing some exercises, practicing the vocabulary and getting to use it and familiar with it. And we will also be discussing the book. So a, an opportunity for you to express your opinion on what you think of the book. What do you think of the central character, for example, or what do you think the theme of the book is? predictions for what will happen in coming chapters. Um, can you make any comparisons with a real life situation or a real life person, for example? So there will be lots of discussion, lots of practice, lots of reading going on in the reading class. And that these will happen every Monday from now until the end of October. So if you click on the book yourself into the sessions, you will be taken to uh, an actual calendar where you will see all of the classes that are available and you can select any of the classes. There are the other two classes that are on offer are a writing class and a speaking class. The writing class will help you to practice your creative writing you're perhaps you want to start writing a blog or you want to write feel more comfortable writing to your friends in English or perhaps you need to practice your writing for essays because you are going to be sitting an English exam whether that's IELTS or one of the Cambridge exams or it's TOEFL 
and you need some writing practice. How do you get the best mark possible? What language and grammar structures should you be using to get a good grade or a good band score in the English exams? Or you could be looking to write for work. Do you have to write letters or emails? Do you have to write reports or write presentations, put things on screens the way that I have today? So do you have to make sure that it's presented correctly? Is it with the right, uh, the right language that you're using with the right level of formality? All these sorts of things we will be looking at in the writing class and that will be taking place every Tuesday again from 2.30 in the afternoon and that again will run until the end of October. The final class, as I say, is a speaking class and we will be looking at a variety of topical um, articles every week from the news, from TED Talks, from things perhaps that I've found interesting on Facebook or that other people have shared with me, perhaps something that I have read in a magazine, uh, all sorts of different topics that will give you an opportunity to talk about current affairs and also be able again to express your opinion where we will be learning lots of different vocabulary, lots of ways of express, expressing our opinions as well. So that's, so that's the group classes that are coming up. Um, so I hope that um, I will get to see some or lots of you in these classes as we go through until the end of October. So I think that is everything here. I can't see any further questions anywhere. I'm just having a quick look around to see if anybody has any. Oh, Anna, that's no, that's no problem. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're probably going to finish down just now anyway, but thank you so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, so yes, so that is the end for today's lesson. If you have any questions after you have watched the replay, please put a comment in the quest in the comments field underneath and I will be checking back to answer any further questions you may have um, later on. This video will also be uploaded onto YouTube and I will put a link onto my YouTube channel so you can see all the other lessons that I have on YouTube and all the other um, little bits and pieces that I have on YouTube. Don't forget to join the Lexiconology Cafe where I will be setting up a group chat. So that is uh, where everybody will be able to just chat together like individual messenger, but everybody will be together. So we will be having a group chat about some pronunciation later on this evening. Um, and I will see you next week, next Wednesday for more questions and answers. If anybody has um, a suggestion for uh, a broader lesson like the pronunciation that I have done for the past two weeks, so perhaps you would like an explanation of using a modal verb or using a conditional tense, let me know and I can add in a mini lesson within the bigger question and answer session. So that's it from me for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and that you found it useful. Uh, and I hope to see everybody next week in our future question and answer session. So until then, take care, everybody, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.